Hi friends! Welcome to Sunday School Time. It's so good to be together with you again today. Um, I'm always so glad when you join me for Sunday School. Today we're going to jump into the New Testament and I love the history of the Old Testament but I think the New Testament for me has been easier to read and understand over the years. So that's why I'm really glad to be there. We're starting a new unit because we're in the New Testament. And so we have another memory verse. This one is John 3.16. And you probably have heard your parents say it over and over again. And we say it a lot in church. Um, it is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever, belie whoso whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It is a good one, and I hope you and your parents will write it down and work to memorize it over the next three or four weeks. I'll try to remember to bring it up to us again the next time we're together. Well, what do you see when you look in the nighttime sky? Well, hopefully, if the sky is clear, you get to see the stars. That's one of my favorite things to do in the evening is to look at the stars as they come out. Um, when you're away from city lights and out in the country and open spaces, you can really see them so clearly. And people have studied stars for a very long time and even put together names for stars that look like they connect to make pictures in the sky. And those star pictures are called constellations. And I printed some out for you. Um, this one is called Hercules, and this next one is called Cephas. There are lots and lots of them. I'm only going to show you a few today. This one is called Andromeda. And this one is called Canis Major because it looks a little bit like a dog. Canis means dog. And the, there are two on this one. The top one is called Pegasus, and the bottom one is called Ursa Minor. Now, Ursa Minor is also called the Little Dipper. There's an Ursa Major as well, and it's called the Big Dipper. And now we're getting to my two favorites. The first one is Cassiopeia, and it's kind of like a W, which is for Warner, but that's not why I like it. I just like the name, Cassiopeia. I think it's so pretty. But my very favorite constellation is Orion. And when you connect those stars, you can always look for his belt in the sky. And he's supposed to be some kind of protector. But I know that God is our only protector. Well, an astronomer is the name of someone who studies the stars. And a long time ago, in Jesus' time, these men were called magi. And the Bible tells us that when Jesus was born, of course, there was a star in the sky that pointed to the location of his, of his birth. And the Magi noticed that unusual star and went out to find it, to find the Messiah. I'm not going to read this passage to you in Matthew, but it is Matthew chapter 1, verse 18, and it goes all the way to Matthew chapter 2 verse 23. Now that's a lot of reading and I'm not going to do that with you today. But let's just, I'm going to let you read that with your mom and dad. You heard it a ton in church. I have to yawn. <sighs> Excuse me. I'm so sorry. Sometimes that happens. Um, I hope you'll read it with your mom and dad. You've heard it a, a dozen times in church, I'm sure. Um, but it is about the story of Christ's birth. So let's get to the point of our lesson. Our last lesson was from Malachi, and it was about how God's people were waiting for the coming Messiah. After about 400 years of not hearing from God, the people finally got what they had been waiting for. The prophets that we learned about in the Old Testament have predicted details about the birth of Jesus. And in the first book of the New Testament, Matthew, we see many of those prophecies fulfilled. And this time frame is such an important part of God's great big story. 
Mary was the one chosen to be Jesus' mother, and Joseph was chosen to be Jesus' earthly father. Well, when Joseph found out that Mary was already or Mary was pregnant before they were married, he didn't want to be married to her. But God showed Joseph in a dream that Mary's baby was from the Holy Spirit and that he should go ahead and marry Mary. In Matthew 1 verse 23, it says, The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel. This was the prophecy from Isaiah chapter 7 verse 14 fulfilled. And after Jesus was born, these magi, the astronomers, came searching for him. And they saw the star in the east and they wanted to find the Messiah and worship him. Well, King Herod, who was afraid the Messiah would take over his throne, wanted to find the Messiah too. Matthew 2 verse 6 says, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. These were the words the prophet Micah spoke in Micah 5 verse 2 and verse 4. And that passage directed the Magi and frightened King Herod. Well, after the Magi came to visit the baby Jesus, the family left for a while instead of going back home. And that was also predicted in the, New, in the Old Testament. Matthew 2 verse 15 says, And so it was fulfilled what the Lord has said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. That was in Hosea chapter 11, verse 1, where we also hear those same words. Well, King Herod was so angry and worried, distressed about the baby Jesus, that he ordered all baby boys in the Bethlehem area to be killed. That's horrible. But thankfully, Joseph had obeyed God's warnings in a dream and stayed away from that area during that terrible time. Matthew 2 verse 18 says, A voice is heard in Ramah, weeping and mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. This was the fulfillment of the prophet Jeremiah in his words in Jeremiah 31 verse 15. Well, Joseph continued to listen to God through dreams in order to keep Jesus safe. And their family settled down in a town called Nazareth. And therefore, Jesus was known as a Nazarene. And this was also something that the prophets had predicted. So I think it's amazing that all of those details were exactly fulfilled, just as God had spoken them through the prophets. The people had to wait a long time for Jesus the Savior to come. But when he did, it was just exactly like God said it would happen. From Genesis on, God has kept his promises to his people. God's word is true. His promises were not just for the Israelites. They're for you and me too. He sent Jesus for his people way back in the New Testament. And he sent Jesus for us today. Jesus is the best promise and the best gift that we could ever possibly imagine. I'm so grateful for him, and I'm so grateful for you all, and I'm thankful that you join me every week. Well, let's close in prayer. Thank you, God, for fulfilling all of your promises. I'm always amazed when I read something in the Old Testament how it was then fulfilled in the New Testament through Jesus. Your word is incredible. Your promises are true. And you are so faithful to your people, even when we are disobedient. So God, we just want to say thank you today that you love us so much that you sent your son for us. We love you and we praise you this day. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, boys and girls, I love you so much, and I'll see you the next time.